Cage Time with John Morgan. And welcome back post UFC 300 episode of Cage Time with John Morgan. Max Holloway becomes even a bigger star than he already was in one of the most spectacular walk-off knockouts you will ever see. Alex Bahia retains his light heavyweight strap, and from top to bottom, this card delivered beyond everybody's expectations. And there are plenty of you haters out there that said UFC 300 wasn't that good and you were disappointed in the line, line, lineup. Shame on you. And to help bring more shame upon those people, let me introduce you, my co-host. He was there front row, taking his journalistic integrity down a little bit on the walk-off KO. John Morgan, follow him on X, John Morgan underscore MMA. What it up, brother? Oh, you can always trust on your friends to call you out, right? But no, man, it was great. Look, you know, we'll, we'll talk about some of it. You know, we got some picks right. We got some picks wrong. But one thing I think we definitely got right is that this card was awesome on paper, man. And it absolutely delivered in principle. And yeah. Uh, I did have to for a second. We'll just get it out of the way. Remember where I was. I mean, that was one of the most insane moments you'll ever see in your life. Uh, that The Max Holloway knockout of Justin Gaethje. And, and I, if you haven't seen it by now, stood up, hands on my head, mind blown. It was just unbelievable. It was, And then it, after a moment or two, I realized, oh, wait a minute. I'm sitting on press row right now. I need to sit down right now and get back in my chair. But that was just how mind-blowing that finish was to what was already a great fight. But as you said, man, Max Holloway just took himself to a new stratosphere of stardom. Um, and that will be as, as, as amazing of a night as USC 300 was. That will absolutely be the moment that everybody remembers forever. That is part of USC history, MMA history, Max Holloway legacy. I mean, that's one of the greatest highlights that we've ever seen. I need to start by saying I had always claimed that I am a first-class ticket holder on the Blessed Express, but I said I hated that fight because I was very worried about how Justin Gaethje changed his career. I was very worried in the amount that Max Holloway does get touched during fights and what the repercussions of that was going to be when fighting a Justin Gaethje. Max Holloway. I apologize. I was wrong. You delivered, in my opinion, the most spectacular moment in UFC history. The most spectacular moment in UFC history to cap an unbelievable fight that you, you know, you just defied every expectation in this fight. Unbelievable. I, I'm a law. I was at a loss of words other than I texted you best moment UFC I've ever seen. It was and look, you're not alone in that. I mean, listen, I, I was thinking about as that fight was unfolding, you know, as we were getting into the later rounds, and I'm like, man, I saw a lot more people worried about how Max Holloway was gonna be after this fight than I heard picking him to even have a potential of winning. You know what I mean? So you were not alone in that sentiment. I, I felt the same way, man. I, I loved it. I, I mean, I love Max. How do you not love Max Holloway? But Justin Gaethje, a destroyer of men, an absolute wrecking machine. We were all worried about it. And then to, to go out there and fight just an absolutely perfect fight. I mean, execution, game plan, everything was, was there. So it was an amazing fight. And then with seconds left, he takes what was an amazing performance and, and makes it a, an iconic performance by pointing to the center of the and, and going out there and throwing in a fight that he didn't have to do that, right? Dana White, I thought so, you know, laid it out perfectly because that's what makes it spectacular. If you're new to the sport or even maybe if you're arguing, hey, I've seen, you know, uh, how about the Edson Barbosa wheel kick knockout of Terry Edom that's always a classic up there. The Yair Rodriguez back elbow is obviously, you know, a, a, a moment that'll live in history forever. But this, to, to be fighting a guy like Justin Gaethje who changes people's careers, who is absolutely considered one of the most dangerous dudes in the history of the sport, and to outpoint him over the course of five rounds, to expertly have that, to have the fight in the bag, and then to go to the center and give that dude a chance and say, look, man, I know I've got this fight won. I can put my hand in the air right now and walk off, and you can't do anything about it. But let's go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the center of the cage and to throw down with that man and to also clip him and put him face down on the canvas 
Oh, I'm getting chills now just thinking about it, man. I'm getting fired up. It just did oh. for WrestleMania. Oh. It gives me chills. Oh, it's amazing. Amazing. And a man that was already a legend just takes it to a, another level. Max Holloway knockout victory five or four fifty nine mark of the fifth and final round after cruising arguably four rounds to zero, maybe three one if you wanted to give Justin Gaethje the fourth round could have, but arguably four rounds to nothing in the bag saying ten second clacker meet me right here and this isn't unique to the Justin Gaethje fight. He does this. And when you hear him, well, when you hear him talk about why he does it, it just makes the guy, his brass balls even just that much bigger. But like when he, was it just me or were you just saying what Max Holloway is here is doing is special. He is giving a special performance tonight, but Justin's eventually going to catch him. But 100%. Justin's eventually going to catch him. I, ne I I felt that way on the edge of my seat that entire fight because, albeit, his nose shattered in 100 pieces. He's leaking everywhere. His eyes are swelling, starting to swell shut from kind of blowing his nose too much. Why he's doing it. You just always thought that Justin Gaethje was eventually going to catch him and hurt Max Holloway, but he never did. And then for Max Holloway to say... I'm going to give you the opportunity and we're going to see who the batter man is. Meet me right here with 10 seconds left and let's go toe to toe. That's, that's a BMF right there. And you're right. I did have that feeling. I mean, and, and by the way, let's give some shout outs to Justin Gaethje as well. Right? Like, I don't know if people realize how difficult that is. Like that kick that he ducked into at the end of the first round, it was a turning side kick, spinning side kick. It was meant for the body, but he leaned into it, caught him on the nose, destroyed his nose, like instantly broken. No question whatsoever. So you got to think at that point, he's no longer breathing out of his nose. Well, Blood is, is pouring into his throat. Probably feels like he, he's drowning out there as he's trying to be in a fist fight, you know, chasing forward and continues to go. So that man deserves all the credit in the world as well for making this a fight. But that's what you said. That's what makes it special. We've seen Max Holloway do this before, right? So, uh, you know, we've seen him point to the center. We've seen him go out there. I mean, the epic moment with Ricardo Lamas. Yeah. I mean, we, we know this, right? But to do it with Justin Gaethje, who, as you said, I just outpointed you. For 24 minutes and 50 seconds, I fought a perfect fight. And I, because I did think the whole time, I thought, man, Justin Gaethje is eventually going to just turn up the heat and just, and he did. You know what I mean? As you said, like the fourth round was his best round. He finally is like, look, I got to go. I'm running out of time. I, I got to do this. He had some success late. Um, so, yeah, I kept thinking he's going to have this opportunity. But for Max to be like, look, man, you didn't get done against me for 24.50, but guess what? I'm giving you 10 to try it right now. And Justin Gaethje has one shot power. He could absolutely, he, that could have backfired horribly for Max Holloway. He could have gotten clipped, and we'd be saying, good Lord, we love you, Max Holloway, but what are you doing? That was dumb. But instead, he goes out there and just, I mean, iconic. We could spend the entire show talking about that moment right there, that fight in that moment, because that is the stuff, Legends, man. That is the stuff. You know, if you thought the BMF title was like, ah, whatever, what am I doing? No, that is a BMF. That is a man that deserves to be wearing a belt of some kind because he is that bad of a man. Blessed man forever, though, as he said, he wants it to be known as, uh, so that he can say it out loud. Blessed man forever. It's hard to articulate the emotion that that brought on so much. So it's something like this. Ah, yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> that's how you are. Well, it. Listen, it, 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 dare, if I'm going to summarize ah. it by a body motion, <laughs> look no further than Mr. Morgan <laughs> sitting in press row. The only one. Yo, I saw a lot of O's, but I only saw one press row guy stand up. <laughs> ah! I only saw one. But you know what, John Morgan? That's why you are who you are. Because oh. you love this game so much that, you know what? A visceral moment is going to cause a visceral reaction. And that's what you want to see in these pundits. You're not going to see them in a lot of them. You're going to get a lot of ahas and I told you so's and I this, that, and the other with a lot of other journalists. Man, you are a fan first. And I give you shit. Like your journalistic integrity came down a bit. Blah, 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 blah. And that's my love language, just to give you crap. But that's what that's why 
we love that's why you've been you know up for the mma awards for 15 years straight right because we know you're a fan first and that's why you love it that's why you're there that's why the ufc puts you there and damn it i'm glad you did that now <laughs> i appreciate it man it was funny i it was totally like not i mean it just happens you know what i mean it just still yeah. yeah i am i'm a fan first i have no problem admitting that I love the sport. You know, I have a job to do and I and I enjoy doing it, but I love the sport. And yeah, for a moment, I totally forgot the job that I was supposed to be doing. And I was just right there alongside you. Cause I know you were sitting at home doing the same thing, watching on paper. You're going, oh. I woke my kids up. I woke my kids up. <laughs> there you go. So I, I did it. And then, you know, after a couple seconds, I did realize like, oh, Morgan, sit down. You're standing up. What are you doing? Yeah, I do the same thing when I'm calling fights. You know, my, myself and Punk, we'll do that. I mean, a big moment, uh, an insane highlight like that. We, you know, we'll grab each other. Or you're just like, oh, because we're, we're, we're fans, man. We, 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 we're fans of the sport, man. And it is the greatest sport, man. It, it provides moments like that that are just absolutely unbelievable. And, and, and man, Respect to those guys, right? I mean, Max Holloway gets awarded with six hundred thousand dollars worth of bonus money, and him and fight Justin of the Hachi. night and a performance bonus, right? Which hey, yep. typically, you, you know, you would say knockout of the night, but now it's a performance bonus. So, yep. fight of the night and performance, two performance, six hundred thousand dollars in bonuses. That is insane. Hey, listen, there's so many Dana White haters out there. And it, and, and, and it drives me crazy because it's those people that just want to tear other powerful people down. Now, Dana White has his flaws. Don't get me wrong, right? Everybody. Everybody. Right? We're all sinners by nature, okay? But for what he did for those fighters, 50000 You don't have to give any bonus. Let's start there. You don't have to give any bonuses. You're under a contract. You're contractually obligated. The promotion is contractually obligated to pay you this show and win money. And that's it. For him to even go $50,000. Great. But $300,000 per bonus based off of a fan being like, hey, we think it should be. Okay. Man. <laughs> Dana White is a certified G, a legend of the game. He is going to be on the Mount Rushmore of this sport. And I can't like just thank him enough because I truly believe he single-handedly in that decision took what it was going to what was already going to be a great card with great action. And he, with that, ratcheted it up 10 more degrees because every fighter wanted that additional $300,000. Good honor. We saw it at the press conference, man. As soon as he confirmed, hey, yeah, we're doing 300000 and everybody just looked at each other like, oh, man, we're going to do this tonight. And, you know, look, Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje, we always expected them to bring it anyway, but they wanted that extra money. There's no question about it. I mean, Max Holloway called for it. He's like, give me six hundred k now. I think I deserve both of them, and, and he did. And, and to your point, listen, man, uh, Dana White, no, nobody is above criticism, right? I mean, he's got his flaws just like anybody else, but, man, he has done – to deny what he's done with, for this sport and to help build the UFC to where it is uh, would just be ridiculous. So, man, to turn on the 300 k bonuses is amazing. And then, look, he even said – because I asked him at the press conference afterwards, I was like, look, was this more difficult to issue the bonuses than normal, knowing like how much is at stake? And he was like, no, 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 these were the right bonuses to give. That was easy. He's like, but don't you worry. There was a lot of other people on the card that are going to be getting some checks coming their way too because there were some incredible performances up and down the card. So, man, it was just... It was just a special night, man. And, and I know, you know, you and I going into it, we're saying, man, all you guys' criticism, step back. What are you doing? Like, this lineup is insane. And it even delivered above my expectations, man. I mean, really just entertaining from start to finish. Credit to the Las Vegas crowd, man. The Las Vegas crowd showed up early. I doubted. I doubted and said, man, I've been to, you know, uh, dozens and dozens and hundreds at this point of events in Las Vegas. And I'm telling you, it's just a late arriving crowd. I, I saw a stat the other day, uh, Eric Winter, I believe, pointed it out, uh, 97 or 9,500, I think, tickets were, were already uh, scanned through the system before the first fight started. So, I mean, the crowd showed up early. It was a special atmosphere, and it was a special night of fights, man. It was just – it's cool because it's funny, right? Like, USC 300, I mean, at the end of the day, like, these blockbusters, the 100 – It was right you know, events, to fail. It was right to fail. Dude, 200, 200 kind of was a little disappointing, if we're being honest. You think back to USC 200, what? Well, not a bad night, but it just – it wasn't amazing. This card delivered on everything. Every expectation, every hope, man. This is this is just one of the greatest nights in, in UFC history, and again – um, with that iconic moment that will live forever between two legends, man. Just 
can't could, could not beat this night. Amazing. If, if you take a, somebody who is not a fan and you set them down with a fan watching UFC 300, they are a fan. That's how powerful of a night. We want to talk about how great it was for the sport, how great it was for the fighters. What this does for mixed martial arts, just that night, what it is going to do for this entire sport moving forward is astronomical. Can't be put into words. Every single person was talking about Max Holloway, right? Yep. That night. What mm-hmm. that singular moment, I believe, has done for this sport is just, you can't, it's immeasurable, right? Max Holloway, up a division against the certifiable assassin, the killer, Justin Gaethje, the man who changes careers, and he does that with one second left after winning the fight. I can't go on. I can go on and on and on, and I won't because we've already done it. But we can we can do five hours just on that ten seconds. But Max Holloway, his twenty second promotional win that ties him fourth all time in the UFC, and he delivers that after everybody's like he's young, but he's got so many miles. He's young, but there's so many buts. But he's fighting Justin Gaethje. But he's going up in weight. But, but, but. And he delivers on the biggest card ever put forth. Legends are made. It really is. I mean, it, it, that's and we can spend so much time talking about it because we just realize how iconic and special a moment it is. And I hope if somebody's new to the sport, you know, they can grasp just how big it was. And it wasn't just the highlight itself. It was everything around it, the person that it was against, all the circumstances. There. That's what made this thing so special. And you know it's special when you win a fight at lightweight and the featherweight champ who had previously said he wasn't interested in fighting you was just like, uh, well, yeah, I, I realize I'm probably fighting Max Holloway next, so we'll look forward <laughs> right. to doing that. You know, Ilya Teporia came out afterwards. It was just like, yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's it's Max Holloway next. I realize that, even though it was a fight at 155 pounds. That's how spe- when you earn a, a, a title shot in a different weight class than you were competing in that night, you know it was a special performance. I have never been emotionally drained and exhausted after that. I mean. The women's fight, unfortunately, which was an amazing fight, had to good follow. fight. It was a great fight. It was a great fight. I mean, marred in a little bit of like, I uh, should beat her multiple times, but right. Um, I was exhausted. I was exhausted. I almost had to tune out the women's fight. It's it was you, crazy. You, you again. You weren't alone. Uh, Zhang Wiley beats Yan Zhanan, a fight that looks like it's over at the end of the first round, but ends up being a back-and-forth battle. Yan Zhanan, to her credit, I mean, good Lord, you said it. She lost several times in there, but she never gave up, man. She went all the way to the end. You know, She might have you know, p- p- could been submitted, knocked out, and, and decisioned all in the same night. She kept going. But you're, that's just the way it felt, man. I mean, everybody is exhaling and decompressing, and then you know the music starts for the next walk-in, and you're just like, I can't watch more fights right now, dude. Like, I need a minute, man. I, I I can't watch any more fights. So it was wild. It ended up being a good fight, but um, you know, it, it just that's 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 natural. That's gonna happen, right? You know, but, it, 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 everybody felt that way. But then there was a the main event, and but there was a guy walking to the cage like this, and he had to do this walk a little bit further this time because he had to get to the 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 the, the angle to be able to see Jamal Hill. He pulled back the bone and all shot it. Alex Bahia TKO victory over Jamal Hill, tw- who 10 and two in two and a half years, three and a half years, I believe. He started in 2021, came into the UFC in late 2022, I believe. But right. Alex Bahia 10 and two improves the 10 and two TKO victory over Jamal Hill, who uh, falls back to 12 and two at 314 of the first round. The fight's the fight, but there's yeah. iconic moments in every fight. How does takes the, how does how does Alex Bahada create two iconic moments in a in a in a, in a fight that's barely a half a round? <laughs> it's amazing. The dude, yeah. the dude is the dude is something special, man. He's not like a big boisterous guy. He doesn't talk a lot, but he's got two iconic moments in one fight that when lasts you, barely half a round. He is the epitome. Of actions speak louder than words. Mm, great point. If you were going to put some a face in the dictionary that epitomizes that, it's Alex Bahia. And let's start. I, 
let's take the warm the entrance music out of it. The you know the the walk, the shooting the bow and arrow, the stoic nature of the introductions, which is just awesome. Oh, I can't. Right. Let's take all that out of it. He takes <laughs> a shot right to the gonads. Herb yep. Bean sees it. Time out. He goes, no, Herb. No, Herb. And Herb's like, all right, fight. <laughs> the first punch thrown after that, the patented, the deadly left hook, Alex Bahayat puts down Jamal Hill, follows up with a few extra ground and pound, then down to a hammer fist. Herb Dean waves it off at 314 of that first round. And still, to your point, two iconic moments in that fight. The yep. nut shot, no Herb, then the, the patented left hook immediately. And making it immediately following is what just made it iconic. Oh, well, and look, and, 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 dude, and, and I love his celebration as well, right? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll show my age here by not knowing the, the gentleman's name, but I know the meme, right? The, the, you see it on TikTok or Instagram, whatever. My kid has shown me, he does easy stuff and shows like, no, nah, this is how you do it. You know, this is the easy way to do it. Um, uh, so anyway, well, I, it, didn't it was know, I didn't know that was, I didn't know that was, oh yeah. Thing. Oh yeah. See, I, oh good. See, I'm showing okay. my age or I'm showing my wisdom by not knowing the name. You're showing your wisdom by not knowing it even existed. Right. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it was like, Hey, Hey, like you yeah. guys thought he was the man or he wanted to talk <laughs> all this man. That's all I thought it was. That's, that's basically what it is. I mean, that's what the, the, the character does. He does things the easy way and just goes, this is the way. This is the easy way. But to your point, man, the, yeah. The, the, and I asked, I asked uh, Alex about that afterwards. You know, why did you not take a second? Because obviously you've been in the cage, you know, hundreds of times. You understand, guys take a shot to the groin. They'll just step back a little bit. Like, hold on. You know, even we, I mean, obviously we've seen bad ones where guys drop to their knees and they're crawling around the ground. But even the glancing ones, it's like, hold on. Let me check. Let me, let me reset. Let me make sure I'm good. And he was like, I mean, to literally just brushed him aside and was like, no. And kept going, and 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 the like you said, the first punch you threw landed clean, knocked Jamal Hill down. And I asked Alex after that, like, why wouldn't you even just like take a second and just reset? And he's like, man, you know, like I had my distance, I was dialed in, like I knew, like I, that was the moment, and I didn't want to have to reset and work my way back in. You know what I mean? I had I had made the read, I was in the position I wanted to be in, and I was ready to fire. So step back, I'm good. Let me go and drops him. Unbelievable, and, man! You watch the replays. I mean. No question about it. You know, I mean, the eyes rolling in his yeah. head on, on the way back. Jamal Hill is out on the way down. Um, fights over. I mean, uh, gosh, Alex is, is dangerous. And gosh, man, what he's been able to accomplish, and as you said, just such a short period. And and, and this dude, w without talking much, is a, a huge superstar. And, and whether you want to talk about the marketability or whether you just want to talk about the credentials themselves, I mean, unbelievable. This dude is a star, and it's incredible what he's been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. Jamal Hill. Yuri Prohaska, Jan Blahovich, Israel Adesanya, Strawn Strickland. That's insane. That's insane. In two five and a in a half row. years. Five champions in two and a half years. Un. Let me read that again. Jamal Hill, Yuri Prohaska, which we will talk about really quick. Yep. Jan Blahovich, Israel Adesanya, and Sean Strickland. That is an unbelievable stat line. And oh, by the way, four of those knockouts. You know what I mean? Finishing champs, not just beating champs, not just outpointing champions, dropping champions. In, or, I mean, it's just, it's incredible, man. If, if, how does if the guy keep believer, getting bigger? He gets keep. He was massive in that cage on Saturday night. How did he ever make eighty five? Hey, and now he's talking about going up to heavyweight, right? And normally, when people say stuff like that, you're like, "Come on!" And D Dana White did afterwards say, "Ah." Uh, it's a big jump. I don't know. Let's keep him where he's at. I, to be honest, I think that's, you know, we talked about it going in, how wild it is that the light heavyweight division, that title has just been a hot potato that people are passing around. I think because of that, it's made marketing some of those title fights a little more difficult because you almost forget who's the champion again. Like, how did they get there? I don't even remember. Didn't he win the title? Oh, but he got hurt and had to give it up. But I thought that guy won the title. Oh, no, he got hurt too. So it's been weird. So I think Dana White. Again, and, and I don't want to say selfishly, but selfishly for the good of the company is like he wants to keep a guy in a division and market that and build it and get a little structure there. But if you're just talking about if Alex Bejeda says, no, I'm going to heavyweight, do you doubt him? Because I don't. That type of power that he's got right there. I mean, look, there's some tough matchups in there. You know what I mean? Tom Aspinall would be a very, very tough matchup for him because of the speed and the grappling and all those things he brings to heavyweight. But 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 could you, you know, could, could Alex Bejeda touch him and go to sleep? <laughs> yeah anybody yeah. in this world he can do that too anybody right? maybe, in this world 
Maybe not Max Holloway. That's the only one. <laughs> uh, in a weird way, his undro- his never been dropped stat remains th- there. Yeah, but... he, la- he started laughing. He's like, I guess it was Mike Bond that said, "Hey, by the way, the official stats don't throw a knockdown." He's like, "Oh yeah, it was a slip. It was it was a slip. We'll call it a slip." <laughs> uh, while the punch connected directly to the behind the ear. Um, uh, you know, it's a little off balance. A little off balance. So. I mean, I, we can just sit here and revel in the night, hmm. but I'm going to bring up, we, we could go on and on and on so many fights. I want to bring up a couple of other fights just that delayed uh, before I do that. Max Holloway punches his ticket, wherever the hell he wants to go. He gets to do, I mean, you can yep. give him a, you honestly, he could get a shot at lightweight next and it'd be very deserving and he could take it he gets the 45 he punches his ticket whatever he wants max whatever the hell you want you get all right done Uh, done of discussion with that now light heavyweight on the other hand it's a little murky right now with that being said and i think jamal hill is a lot better than what he showed saturday night i think jamal hill it was not the fights the the whether he came back too soon, whether the moment was too big for him, he looked, I'm not going to say overcompensating a little bit. He looked very nervous in there right off the bat, more than I've ever, ever seen him. Now, obviously the stakes are a lot higher, but he just did his body language, even though he was doing the whole thing. I'm, 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 I'm posturing, I'm catching the bow, I'm breaking it the whole nine yards. Am I, did, did you see that as well? Yeah, definitely. And listen, man, I, I I respect Jamal Hill a lot, man. Obviously, we like him as an athlete. And, you know, I, I've already seen the memes going around of people, you know, replaying some of the things he said ahead of the fight and et cetera, et cetera. And I hate that, man. I mean, the dude went out there and he's trying to make it entertaining. And it's that's what's so hard about this sport, man. The, the ones that, you know, put it out there, you, you got to put yourself on the line, right? But I, I did see that as well. And I just never looked set. And I think, and again, I think Alex Bejeda sensed it as well, right? I think that leads into as well, like, no, Herb Dean, step aside. Like, I, I, I got this. I'm putting it on him right now. I can already see my opportunity. Um, you can see it change a little bit for sure. Within 30 seconds, he was on his back foot. Jamal Hill doesn't mm-hmm. fight that way. I've never seen him take a de- back step ever. And and he did, and that's kind of like, I was like, oh, this. I, You saw the writing on the wall. I mean, we've seen enough fights to know that we can predict to a degree of where this fight is going to go by how the body motions are going. And when they both came to the center and Jamal Hill immediately was taking that back step, I mean, that's not going to bode well. And I really just put it as maybe that moment as your first fight back out of a year of a massive injury, one that you, you know, ACL or not ACL an Achilles, like that, that's not, you know, breaking an arm. That's not, a normal injury that is a a huge injury to come back for and i think the moment may have just been a little bit too big for him with the conditions that he had to overcome i i agree and again and i don't think that speaks to where jamal hill will be in the future you know what i mean but this was just a huge ask as you said main event usc 300 i mean coming back faster than anybody thought was going to be possible and uh, you know, I'm sure he's he's frustrated. I mean, he's a student of the game. He that's a tactical mistake. You know, Alex Beheta or any heavy striker like that, the last place you want to do is, is retreat to the cage and give yourself, you know, less options in terms of mobility of where to go. And that's what you end up doing when you're facing a big striker. You want to be out in the center if you possibly can um, to not limit your motion. And so he and he got clipped. And and again, Alex Beheta, if he touches you, you're going to sleep. He's just different, man. He's he's he hits different. And, uh, you know, again, I, I don't think this is going to speak to Jamal Hill. No, uh, knowing him, this is just going to fuel him to work even harder, man, to prove people right. wrong. He's going to be back. There's a big future for Jamal Hill. Um, this was just a look bad as night. And I said that I was leaning towards Jamal Hill because he was the Ranger. He fought longer. And so I and, and the only way for Pahea to beat him was to close that d- distance because he fights more compact. Mm-hmm. And Pahea took that away in the first five seconds. Yep. Right exactly. off the bat. And I just said, oh, this ain't looking good. But where does Bahia go from here, right? Because if we're looking at the light heavyweight rankings, uh, Yuri Prohaska, he just comes off this awesome fight. I don't know if that's the fight to make. 
Um, now, granted, if he doesn't go up to heavyweight, so let's just under the auspices that we're right. staying at 205 right now, yep. you know, and then, and then you have Jan Blahovich, who it was a split, I believe it was a split decision victory for right. Alex Pejea. I, I don't know if the fans are going to be clamoring for that fight, but it could be the fight to make. Um, two big dudes who are going to stand right in front of each other and just slug it out. But with Yuri Prohaska's just samurai esque performance, that may be the. F- I don't know. You tell me. You're dialed in more than I am. I to me, I'll be honest. I think the fight to me is is Magomed Ankalaev. I mean, I, Yuri Prohaska was on the right time frame and he had a great performance. I mean, gosh. Alexander Rakic was was just lighting up his legs. He was landing big shots up top, and Yuri was just smiling and staying right in his face. I mean, how can you not be a fan of Yuri? It's incredible, right? He's getting touched up, but he's smiling, just staying right in his face, changing levels. He's got that wildness to him that's impossible to predict, and it finally paid off. Um, I thought Rakic was on his way, but I'd like to see Magomed Ankalaev. You know, I, I think that to me is the fight to make. Obviously, you had the title fight there with Blahovich that ended in the split draw. Um, then you had the the the, uh, the 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 no contest, of course, with the illegal knee. But he was winning that fight with Johnny Walker. He comes back and wins it again when they redo oh, yeah. it. Um, I, I, it's a fresh matchup, and I think he's done enough to 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 be there. Um, you know, you obviously he's in a title fight. And Goliath's marketability as one that that can like, but that's a it, Brazil card. I mean, if he headlined a Brazil card with that matchup in Brazil, uh, you know, with you know maybe another banger co-main. If they could pull it off, I mean, you know, uh, he had, uh, Lex Bay had talked about, you know, coming into UFC 300 that he could do UFC 301 next month in Brazil. I don't know if they'll try to pull that off. I mean, it turns no. out he did have a broken toe coming to this. I don't think they're going to do that. Um, and and, and Mag- Magomed and Goliath might say, dude, I, I, I'm getting another title shot. I had a weird one last time. I don't want to do it on a month's notice. Um, but it is a fight. Yeah, you know, you're, you're right about that. That would probably be the concern in terms of marketability. Isn't it funny, though, right? Neither one of the guys speaks English. Right, but one of them we consider incredibly marketable, and the other one we're like, ah, I don't know about his marketability. It's bizarre, yeah. but it's wild. It just goes to show you how well Alex Bayetta has done and what he does. But to me, if we're going on deservedness, I would probably uh, to me if we're going on deservedness and a fresh matchup, I like Magomed Ankalaev. But you are right, and, and we always talk about the business side of this as well. If it's a big Las Vegas card or something like that, I think you put in Yuri Prohaska. Obviously, he speaks English. He's kind of gotten over with the fans as well. He's got the recognizable hairstyle, and he's just a a character in himself. Um, he would help sell better. I, I think that would probably do better numbers. Well, Yuri is. I love his post-fight speech that yeah he said i wasn't a samurai i'm not a samurai you know i'm only a guy from the czech republic you know but what is inside of me is samurai-esque like i love that love that because listen that that. guy is so mentally damn tough like let's be honest he's somewhat dorky right in the way he (laughs) like like you know and and like i and i say that like very affectionately yeah of course but, but he doesn't care because he is so bulletproof here up in his head that he is walking through anything. If his body can walk through it, his mind is so strong that he will walk through it when most won't. Such a great way to put it, right? I mean, it, it takes uh, some self-belief, some self-confidence to wear that hairstyle around and, and to conduct yourself in the way he does it, right? But you're right. That post-fight speech was incredible, man. It's just like, hey, you got to believe in something. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not a samurai. I'm just a kid from the Czech Republic. Hey, but I believe in something. I'll work for it. You got to find what your belief is and what makes you and, and chase after that. And don't let anybody tell you you can't. I mean, what a what a great message. I mean, that's that's the truth about life, right? I mean, you got to find what you believe and you got to go for it. And this dude has gone for it. And he had to walk through hell to get there, man. He was taking some nasty damage. I could tell you sitting there cage shot. I mean, again, you you have uh, the, the only better seat than me in, in these fights sometimes. And, you know, when big boys like that are going in there, I mean, it is just nasty. The thuds and the thumps. That you're hearing in there, it's like he ooh, no that has sold. to hurt. He no sold all every it. single one of them, all of it. And you know, you know, he's limping today. There's no way he's walking properly today, man. Like those leg kicks were nasty, but he no but sold it. Smiled the shots right in his face. face. Even some of the shots yes. he takes, it was giving him whiplash. There were, and he just would no sell it and keep moving forward. And I, I, I honestly, in some of those exchanges, because Racket is so technically proficient. I was like, he is going to catch Yuri in one of these wild exchanges. But it was the it, yep. it was the opposite, you know. He, 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 I don't necessarily know if 
it was the style or the power, but once that distance gets closed and you're looking at Rackett to be like, oh, the, his technical proficiency is going to win it here, the pure awkwardness of the angle of the punches probably just throws off everybody. It's just, and, man, the movement that he has, the, you said the awkwardness, the, the, the way that he throws, you don't know where it's coming from. It's, it's just difficult to get a read on, right? Like We always joke about like rolling with a white belt or something, right? Like Sometimes a white belt will do something crazy. You're like, you're not supposed to do that. Like that's not, what, that's not the move you're supposed to make. Like So how did you – you know what I mean? And that's with Yuri. It's like, bro, you're not supposed to throw from there. Like You're off balance, leaning the wrong way. Your weight distribution is wrong. That wasn't supposed to come there. And he caught him by surprise. Great performance from Yuri Prohaska, man. Great, great performance. Right back in – right back in the title picture with that win. Now, this this card had something for everybody. There was only one, in my opinion, there was only one lackluster fight, and that was Aljermaine Sterling, Calvin Cater. But it was a completely dominant victory going up in weight. He got the W. He had to do what he needed to do. He puts the stamp. He lets everybody know he's a player in that division. With that being said, on this just historic monumental night, give me another fight that um, that needs to be elevated from some of the rest. It's so crazy, right? Because, I mean, we could talk about all of it. As you said, I mean, we love Al Jermaine Sterling, you know, CFSC Hall of Famer, man. I love him. But I think even he would admit not the most exciting. But, dude, I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you take away from the debut of Kayla Harrison? Instant title contender, right? I mean, how do you I mean, take yeah. away from that? Unbelievable. Like, you, got, you have to talk about Kayla Harrison and, 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 and her- what she does. Just how physically imposing she was down a division. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Scary. So you got to talk about her. Bo Nickel. I think you got to talk about Bo Nickel, man. When you when the expectations are so high that in the UFC, you get a second round finish and you feel the need to apologize because you know how high the expectations are on you and how many expectations you have for yourself that you're apologizing for a second round finish. I think Bo Nickel is a, a special kind of athlete, man. And I know people like to hate on him. And I, look, how about what he said on the mic afterwards, right? Like, people don't like the guy. And he's like, you know, come along, man. You're going to love me. I promise. You're going to love me. So, Bo Nickel, got to talk about Bo Nickel. But mm-hmm. if we're if we're going to elevate a fight, I mean, look, you and I said we got some picks right. We got some picks wrong. But I mean, we both said, hey, Armin Starukin and Charles Oliveira is going to be a fight you do not want to miss out on. And boy, did they deliver. He came Armin to the Starukin. cage ready to fight. I was going to say, Armin goes 2-0 and on the night, right? Picks up a win on the way to the cage, and then he picks up a win in the cage. Uh, hey, note to anybody out there, when these athletes are walking to the cage, they are in a little bit different mindset, right? The switch has been flipped. Don't be trying to push on them or flip them off or cuss them because they might just swing on you, especially if they're Armin Starukin. Yeah, especially if you're Armenian and you are bred to do this. Come on, man. Yeah, know your audience, kid. Know your that audience, was, right? That that was crazy, man. I thought that was, and it did it did make me wonder. I'm like, man, is he is he like too riled up here? Is he gonna be like? Did he already like mentally like not focus? Like, but then he went in there and what a hell of a fight. And then another in, in the same way that we talk about, hey man, praise on Max Holloway, but you got to give praise to Justin Gaethje. Same thing here, man. Armin Sarukin, I thought. A very close fight, but I thought in my own personal scoring, this was the right winner. I thought Armin Sarukin was the winner, but it was so damn close, and Charles Oliveira is so damn dangerous, and Charles Oliveira's stock does not drop one bit in here. This was a phenomenal fight. He he had the more uh, potential fight-ending sequences, yes, he but, did. Ar- but Armin won the fight. He did. Yep. Um, and and I think any any rational person is going to look at it and, and agree with us. Um, yep. I, I have no problem with that decision. I have no problem with being split. I actually thought it was going to be a UD, but it, somebody did give him. And I'm not going to argue with that that because it was that close. What do you yep. value? Do you value three minutes versus two minutes and an almost? Who knows, right? Um, with that being said, the last person we got to get out of here, the last one I do want to mention, by the way, your boy, Money McConnell looked amazing. Bro, Diego I, I was going to say, I, I got to give a shout out to Money McConnell because I love Jalen Turner, man. He is an amazing fighter. I knew this was going to be a tough matchup for McConnell. And I know Jalen Turner's kicking himself for trying to get that walk off. I bet he wanted that 300 K. And so he's like, let me get it. Let me do this as a walk off and I get that 300 K. But Money McConnell has got heart, man. I, I, it was, I was happy to see him come back from, from some trouble. So sorry to interrupt because Diego Lopez deserves some respect too, but I, I got to give an extra this shout kid. out for Money McConnell. This kid, Diego Lopez, is a oh. superstar 
in waiting and he and and possibly his next fight is going to shoot him into the stratosphere once he gets on that pay-per-view main card. His next fight will be, I can tell you, he's fought fight nights. He's fought undercards. He's done this. He's going to be on a pay-per-view main card, and people are going to see this guy, the reckless abandon, technical proficiency in which he fights with the mullet, the whole nine yards. You know, he's branding. I forgot what it, sa- it says on his chest, but something like you can do anything you want if you dream it big. So, some <laughs> Something like that. But he is a superstar in waiting. And I'm telling you, if, he, if you're taking out Sadiq Youssef with ease, you are a stud. Absolutely. Unbelievable. This kid has changed his life. It's so cool to see, man. The last year that he's had, stepping in on short notice against Mosar Evloeva, an, an incredibly tough assignment. Comes up short there, um, but has won three straight fights. Uh, two two performance bonuses. You know, uh, Dana White saying he's getting an extra check in this one as well. I mean, the guy has changed his life. I, I think it also it goes to show the value. I know people want to get to the UFC as quickly as possible. He took the long road to get there, the hard road to get there. But you see that veteran savvy in him. You know what I mean? Despite being so new to the UFC, he's been in every position. He's been in every situation. Took the long road to get here. But you're right. His life has changed in the last 12 months. And uh, this dude is a superstar in the making, and I wholeheartedly agree. He'll be on a pay-per-view main card out next time. You can count on that. And Dana White even said, yeah, this kid's something special. He 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 has arrived, and I think we agree with that. So uh, with that being said, we're going to end it a little bit earlier. You should go, usually go an hour, going about 45 minutes uh, today. But I just don't have the energy. Like, literally, Max Holloway drained it out of me Saturday night. I slept like a baby until my kids woke me up so damn early. Um, bro, but, I, well, they bro, were just getting call, payback from when, when I s- stood up and screamed and woke them up. <laughs> Dude, man, I, I was having to say, you know, I called fights in Atlantic City on Friday. So I went Thursday night press conference in Las Vegas, flew overnight to Atlantic City, called fights with CM Punk on Friday night, CFFC 131 on Fight Pass. If you want to catch the replay, it's a great show. Then took the early flight out, flew back home, USC threw on it. I'm with you, bro. Monday morning pointed to the center of the cage and I didn't go meet it, man. I was like, nope, <laughs> <laughs> nope. You got it. You got it, Monday, Max. I'm out, bro. I don't want none of that. (laughs) Well, we'll get back into uh, previewing upcoming fights and what's on the docket. I don't have the energy, and it is all because of you. Max Holloway, you are a legend. You are a G. You are the BMF. Oh, one thing I do want to talk, just touch on, and I kind of agree with this, and I've seen it on some Twitters. I saw one person talking about it. How do you ever follow up that BMF fight? Is that a title that could should that could and should be retired? You know, that's interesting, right? Because yeah, I you know, it was supposed to be a one and done when we when we brought it out to begin with. Now it's become kind of a thing. Nothing is ever gonna top that. Like there's ever. literally no way to ever top it whatsoever. So I, I mean I wouldn't you're gonna have to have a did. duel with guns and something like <laughs> you know, dueling to ever like you know, like ten paces hey, turn around. T- Tables, ladders, and chairs, or something like that. Steel K. I mean, what do, what do you do? Yeah, I, look, it's funny because I, 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 in the beginning, I was not really a BMF guy. I was like, why are we doing this? We don't. It's not wrestling. We don't need intercontinental titles or whatever it may be. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> European and then, title that's only defended yeah. in America. <laughs> Right, it didn't make any sense. And then you know, by the by, the first one they brought the rock. You know, the belt looked really cool, and then they brought the rock in to hand it out. And so now I'm kind of on board with it. Like I'm kind of okay with it. I still don't know how you decide. Like Max's next fight, if it's for the title, is it for the undisputed title and the BMF title? Is it just the? So I mean, it is weird because I don't know how you really like set the lineage of it. And there was talks going into this, and and Daniel was like, "Yeah, you could have a women's BMF fight. It doesn't have to just be men's." You know, he was so. I'm kind of okay with like this proliferating, even though I don't know how exactly you regulate when it's done and who does it and et cetera, et cetera. But if they just said, look, we peaked, <laughs> like there's just no way it's going to get any better than that. You know what? You know, Justin, Justin Gaethje, you're still a BMF. You will always be a BMF. Max Holloway, go put that thing up in your, in your trophy case. Cause we're never bringing that thing back out again. Cause you are, you are blessed man forever. And there's just never going to be anything better. I wouldn't hate to see it go away either. Cause n- nothing can top that. I, they're just, Oh, I'm getting. I, mean, I could get chill. We could start this show all over. We could just talk another. Four, if you didn't have to go because you have places to be, we could talk another 45 minutes about this moment because it was that iconic. It was that iconic. Iconic. With that, we're gonna wrap up the show for John Morgan. I'm Eric McMahon. Enjoy the fights. <laughs>